Welcome to Mind Over Matter, where we feature young Jamaicans who are shooting for the stars. I'm your host, Margaret Boyne. My guest is only 22 years old. He's Jamaica's 2023 Rhodes Scholar. He has achieved an impressive record of academic success as he's presently at Cambridge University on the Royal Highness Prince of Wales Scholarship, pursuing a Master's in Development Studies. He's a recipient of the PM Youth Awards for Nation Building and the Morris Cargill Award for Opinion Journalism in 2019. He's also a recipient of the Governor General's Award for Excellence in 2021. We'll get to know more about his journey to becoming a Rhodes Scholar and his future aspirations. My guest is David Salmon. Welcome to my Dover Matter, David. Well, thank you for having me, Margaret. Boy, David, my dilemma is how to, to get all that you have done in, in, in a half an hour show, you know. I mean, you have done so <laughs> much at, at 22. Yes, yes. Well, I, I have been quite busy of late. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So congratulations, man, on, on winning the Rhodes Scholarship. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. So how do you feel about um, this incredible achievement? Well, it's a really uh, humbling experience uh, because uh, several outstanding uh, Jamaicans have preceded me uh, up mm. to the University of Oxford on the road scholarship. And I am quite humbled to mm. walk in the same hallways and pathways that uh, they have trod. Uh, those exceptional Jamaicans in the past. So it's a really humbling experience. I'm quite excited for the journey uh, because I'm interested in how to acquire the knowledge from Oxford so I can impact Jamaica at large and the region as well. So I am humble, but quite enthused and excited for the opportunity that it, the Rhodes Scholarship has provided. Yes, and 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 let me say that um some of those road scholars are um Norman Manley, Trevor Monroe, our Dr. Nigel Clark, you know, to name a few. So you're in some big league here. <laughs> so yes. how, did, how did you get the news? I mean, um, did they tell you by email or phone call how did you you know how did they tell you that you had won so uh how the the process is is that you mm -hmm. will do your interview and after the 11 shortlisted candidates uh, are interviewed uh, we wait for around 20 to 40 minutes oh. and wow. they call us in and uh, they announced it's the announcement is made by the the chairman of the, the roads committee selection committee oh. and we we find out then and there after on the day of the interviews after we've completed that process okay so how rigorous was the interview what was that like <laughs> it was a very i would call it a very rigorous process uh, oh. very hard-hitting <laughs> questions they were questions about uh, how to improve productivity in jamaica they were questions on uh, the state of agriculture, how to increase agricultural development. There are questions on the role of media in 21st mm -hmm. century society, especially given that I'm a columnist and and, and previously was a reporter. Uh, so they're very, very diverse groups of questions, mm -hmm. very uh, serious questions, I can say, very heavy hitting, thought provoking questions. And uh, I, for one, enjoyed my interview and enjoyed mm -hmm. sharing uh, my views on, on different matters. So, but that was how the process was like. Okay. So who you, who, who you called first? Who was the first person you called and said, boy, you know, let me get this up. I'm the winner. <laughs> well, actually, my mom was yeah. there at King's House. So, oh, okay. Uh, she was I, actually so there. I, I, oh. She was there. So okay. I had went downstairs and I had shared it with her because she was the person who had a, uh, well, she she came, I asked her to, to stay with me throughout the day <laughs> oh. and uh, she had also carried my scrapbook because I, I collect newspaper articles oh. uh, about different topical issues. So, so I had asked her to carry my, my scrapbooks from home. So I remember good before going into interview, just looking at different areas of topics, different things on the economy, different things on national <laughs> development. Oh, okay. first person who knew about that. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned your mother, though. Um, 
How influential has she been in your life? Talk about, tell me a little about her. Oh, well, mama's been very influential. Uh, well, my whole family, I can mm -hmm. say, has been particularly uh, influential in different ways. So my mom was the one who really introduced me to history, uh, to literature, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, she really cultivated that interest in, in learning. Uh, while for my father, I would say he really assisted. Well, I'm he. I know he gave me advice that proved very useful in the interview, uh, but he also stirred uh, a certain level of interest in uh, just uh, broadening the horizon and not being constrained by any particular area. So even though my mom would have uh, taught me science and literature, he taught me sciences as well, including mm -hmm. biology and chemistry. And my grandfather, who played such an important role in my life was the, the person who would always assist me in uh, just learning as much as I could. So I remember when I was growing up, uh, we used to go down to the National Library after you would pick me up from prep school and I would just collect newspapers on, 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 on uh, information on different topics, whether it be urban planning in Kingston in the 1900s <laughs> or... Wow. Uh, at uh, archaeology uh, mm -hmm. royal that, that time I wanted to be an archaeologist and I remember that what was particularly profound is that when I was younger he said to me this quote where can't does not exist so remove the, mm -hmm. these words from your vocabulary and that stood out to me from then and I have uh, taken that with me uh, throughout the journey so I would say that my family has had a very major impact on me in different ways. Mm -hmm. But but David, I read that um since you were 15, you 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 said that you wanted to win the Rhodes scholarship. No, tell me tell me about that. So in 2015, my high school had its uh before myself, I had its last Rhodes scholar, Tariq Parker. And I remember he came and he gave an address to the school, and I said I wanted to be like Tariq uh in the future. So at the end of third form, it was, I had, I had uh, asked mom to, to come into my room and I said, I'm good. I want to be the, the road scholar for, for, for my year. And I said, okay, this is what so I did research on previous road scholars and say, okay, this is what they do. So they do extremely well in high school. So we get placements, some were father Victorians, mm -hmm. uh, they, the Rhodes Scholars who tend to stand out were persons who were very much involved in nation building, in national development. These were all areas of interest that I had from a, as a boy growing up. So I said, all right, well, I'm going to go and maximize my impact. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go and ensure that I can do the best that I can. So from 15, we had sort of plotted a, pa a pathway mm -hmm. uh, in order to achieve this objective. Mm -hmm. So it was it was targeted then? Essentially, yes. Wow. So, but but at fifteen, though, um, then um, David, some of us make all these um, you know, plans or we set these things, these goals in mind. But you know, along the way, we get thrown off. We get you know demotivated. All kind of things happen. How are you able to remain focused and motivated during during those years? So I did different strategies. Uh, I know one of, so I remember I had printed a, a picture of Tariq and I had placed it on my wall in my bedroom. And I oh, said, I'm going to be, so as I, I call it an I am board. So it was mm -hmm. I am, and then a picture of Tariq and then Jamaica's road scholar. As a matter <laughs> of fact, that picture is still in my room back home. <laughs> what? <laughs> so as, as, as I wake up in the morning, I would see this positive message, mm -hmm. this assertive message. And I said, this is what I'm working towards. Mm -hmm. I had also, I read widely and read examples of other individuals and how they have achieved their goals. Mm -hmm. So for example, Norm Manley is one of my, my favorite all, all Jamaicans of all time. Oh. And I read about him. Uh, I, I remember reading Arnold Bertram's uh, biography of Norman Manley. And he was someone who faced significant challenges growing up, lost his parents when he was very young, and managed and aimed and achieved the Jamaica's Road Scholar. So I said, I read examples of people and how they were resilient, and I took lessons from those examples. Uh, also, uh, 
I so even though I have a a, a larger goal, which would have been mm -hmm. the road scholar, mm -hmm. I also break that up into smaller mm -hmm. plans. So, yeah. so so the road scholarship would have been a seven year plan in 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 the making, but I do one year goals, and mm -hmm. I think it's one year, three year, and five year goals mm -hmm. so it, it doesn't seem as daunting when those steps are broken up into smaller sections smaller mm -hmm. segments mm -hmm. so for example i knew that i wanted to be the top student in my year group by the time i was in fourth form and i had identified that this was the the grades that i would have aimed to achieve uh in these specific mm -hmm. terms and I work towards that. So it's not so it's not just looking at okay, looking at how to be a road scholar in 2022, but it's but it's looking at all right, how do I become a top student in my year group or how can I maximize my impact in my school community or so so it's a lot more uh, I would view it as manageable, smaller right. steps than smaller, this bigger goal. Yes. So were you always a high achiever though, um David, um even before high school? Well, I've always wanted to do the best that I could, mm. and uh, I have been uh, quite uh, blessed with the ability and also the support to, to achieve my personal goals. So I was valedictorian in prep school, and mm. I, I have always wanted to see how far I could go and push the boundaries of what were possible. Uh, but notwithstanding that, there were also some fair share of challenges as well. So mm. I remember I didn't speak very early. I, I, I learned to speak quite late, actually, and had to do speech therapy up to the age of four or five, thereabout. Mm. And uh, I know that uh, bullying was a serious issue. Uh, oh. growing up as well in prep school mm -hmm. uh, so the journey is also not only about how to do well right but mm -hmm. also how to withstand uh circumstances that mm -hmm. would have uh, i would have experienced as well yeah. so th th i would say my journey has been a combination of those factors mm -hmm. so you had a stutter or um no actually no? i so i would mispronounce certain words okay. um, and generally speaking formulating sentences were difficult so mm -hmm. for example let's say if i'm keep saying the word fish i would call it pish mm -hmm. or uh, generally speaking i would not have been able to articulate words mm -hmm. uh, as well until around four four or five there about mm -hmm. so really very late actually uh, as a as a child growing up Mm. So how did you handle all of that though? All um bullying that well, my parents sought the support that was needed. So I'm I'm I did counseling uh mm. growing up. And okay. uh, as a matter of fact, my counselor is, is one of the like the closest person that I that I even to this day, we still communicate to this day. Uh also uh, just knowing that these uh, personal uh stumbling blocks if mm -hmm. one could call mm -hmm. them that mm -hmm. just in my view uh, enhances the life story so i look at it rather than instead of less of a stumbling block but more of an interesting curveball mm -hmm. that adds to the overall storyline that mm -hmm. that is my life so uh, that's how i view it so I, I i change the perspective in how i look at uh, these kinds of obstacles mm -hmm. So um, did you do any sports? I mean, or was it just books? You, you did anything outside? Of so I, I wanted to do sports when I was in prep school. Mm. I was absolutely rubbish <laughs> where, where, where that was concerned. But by the time I got to high school, I did badminton for three years from first oh, to third form. Okay. And then I joined the track team in fourth form. What? <laughs> I, I didn't make champs, the champs team, but I made the reserve champs team, which oh. I thought was a first time milestone <laughs> oh. for someone who had never done something as intensive like this before. Yes. So, that, that, and then after that, I did debate, which I, which I consider a sport as well. Mm -hmm. So that, that would have been my sporting journey. Mm -hmm. So um you left um Woolmers. How did you do at um Cape and and um CSEC? How how did that go? All right. So Cape, I so I did my first CSEC subject in third form. It was CSEC economics. I did that one year in third form. Uh with my econ teacher, Mr. Gilbert, a wonderful human being. And uh he has become a very good mentor of mine. 
uh, when I got into fifth form, I did nine CSEC subjects. In total, I got nine ones and a two uh, in, in, those, in those subjects. And I came, I believe, fourth in the Caribbean for CSEC geography and second in Jamaica. In terms of Cape, I would have done, I believe it was six subjects I did in upper six. Uh, management of business, sociology, visual arts, literature, economics, and uh, Caribbean studies for one year, and then, uh, mm -hmm. uh, then communication studies for the other year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got once for those, with the exception of literature, which is so unfortunate because I love literature, but uh, <laughs> unfortunately, yes, yes, never given me a one for literature. So I have three tools in my life, and it's CSEC literature, <laughs> KP unit, unit two literature. Uh, but uh, Cape went very well. I would have placed in the Caribbean for economics and top 10 in Jamaica for literature, management of business, mm. as well as visual arts. Okay. So you did very well and you went off to University of the West Indies where you did um, a bachelor's in public policy and management. Yes. And a minor in international relations. So tell me about your interest there now. How did that start? Because you seem to have an interest in international development. Uh, correct. Actually, when I started UA, I was in law, actually. And in I law. spent <laughs> two weeks in law. I, I, I didn't enjoy it at all. So <laughs> I had transferred uh, to public policy and management. <laughs> But I am interested in how countries develop and the development process that different nations take. And uh, my interest would have been germinated from very young, actually, mm -hmm. maybe as early as prep school, because I, as I used to collect articles, I read the paper religiously and I want to know why, why, have, why are some countries more better off than others. So I mm -hmm. read extensively. And different nations, whether it be Botswana or Singapore or uh, Mauritius or Taiwan or some mm -hmm. career. So different countries that would have uh, done extremely well over the last 50 mm -hmm. years. And by the time I got into high school, the latter part of high school, I was interested in becoming someone who was involved in the development space. Yeah, at first, I just wanted to use the legal route to look at whether the international law and look at that angle in fostering development. But as I, as I said earlier, I, I, did, I wasn't particularly a fan of, of law when I first started. So I made the decision to transfer to public policy, which I understand was sacrilegious at the time. Ooh, no one trans <laughs> transfers from law. Um, but I remember I was in church and my pastor, Reverend Jennings, was preaching about uh, the mission that you have and uh, it doesn't matter uh, what you're studying, but you, as long as what you're studying satisfies the mission that uh, God has uh, bestowed upon you. So I remember in that sermon, actually, I had I realized I wasn't liking law. So I started to look at alternatives in the faculty of social sciences and I came across public policy. And I have no uh, mistakes. I, know, I, I have no uh, regrets, rather about doing public policy because it has been a pure godsend. Uh, I've had the opportunity to be taught by very exceptional lecturers in the, in the faculty, and they have only expanded my interest in development. And I've continued that here even to Cambridge. Mm. And um, did that foster also um, your interest in youth development? Actually, I was interested in youth development uh, from growing up because oh, my, my okay. mother had said to me that uh, as because she has two boys, both myself mm -hmm. and my brother, and she said that we're not only supposed to be uh, men, outstanding men, but also men of purpose and impact. Mm -hmm. And those and be, the uh, individuals who should make an impact on the, the community at large. Yeah. So she would have encouraged that uh, commitment to, mm. to Jamaica and community development. And he would fall in from my grandfather's role, role model as a role model because he was heavily involved in the church 
and he was someone very generous in his community. I remember just watching him. We used to have mango trees in the front yard and we would if we had you know, more mangoes he would just put them on the column at the front <laughs> and have people go and take mangoes <laughs> and, and so, so i was always interested in giving back to to the community mm. uh, it's just that when i got into high school i realized youth uh, development could be that avenue where i could make an impact mm. uh, at large so we i was a part of the prefecture as a, as a sub-prefect in ford forum and then um, and from there, uh, my interest really expanded. So by the time I got into my final year in high school, I uh, we would have a, a group of friends and I would have come together and we wanted to relaunch the Jamaica Prefix Association after a 10 year hiatus. And uh, I remember that year was a, a pretty good year because we had these really phenomenal individuals across Jamaica at the same age. So we so happen to have good fortune to have all these really great individuals at one time. And we came together, we, we brought back the Prefects Association. Uh, we had conferences to develop student leaders because the objective was how can we bridge the divide in education mm. from both schools that were seen as traditional and those that are seen as non-traditional. So we were deliberate in wanting to bridge that divide and bringing people together, developing the skill sets of students. And from there, the, the goal just expired, just snowballed into bigger. So by the year after the Prefects Association, the Ministry of Education took the, in my view, the right decision to adopt the organization. And the organization has been going since then for presidents later. Mm -hmm. um, I remember the, the next year I was involved in the youth parliament and that was the first year of COVID. And in that year, we had a really gifted group of youth parliamentarians. And in the report that I gave to youth parliament, because I served as a prime minister during that year, and I was able to document all the, the impact that we have had. So I remember we had a youth seminar series that over 900 young people benefited from that. We had different back to school treats across Jamaica. We would have planted trees, we would have distributed over a thousand books mm -hmm. to rural institutions. So mm -hmm. I, my interest in youth development is always how to give back. Mm -hmm. But I'm also particularly interested in working with like minded, talented and gifted persons as well. Uh, and see how we can all come together and uh, mm -hmm. make an impact and also improve the lives of people as well. Mm -hmm. But um, you have also been involved with other activities as well. Um, you, you're a big time debater. Um, you were a big time big debater at, at, uni at UE. <laughs> Tell me a little about that. Well, debating was actually, I started that from high school. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember I started that in, I believe it may have been fifth form at the time. I remember my first debate because my debating coach had actually said the worst debate she had ever seen. <laughs> and I said, okay, well, I, I'm, I'm going to go and work at this. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I can't, uh, can't imagine that at all. <laughs> oh, oh, it was abysmal. <laughs> uh, uh, poor quality uh but but that taught me a lesson uh which is uh i i don't use my own personal value judgments in debates i i look at the arguments in a okay. rational yeah. way and i think that has been uh, a major factor that has contributed to my success as a debater uh so from there i would have done a burger king national schools debate uh, we almost won that debate that, that when I was in fifth form, actually. And uh, by lower six, we had unfortunately we dropped out in the second round. But by the, my final time in high school, when I had the opportunity of leading the team again, we came mm -hmm. third I believe, in the competition. And that continued to university. I, I remember we ha I have a really great partner at university, Trevon Fletcher, who is still my, my very good friend. Mm -hmm. And we just we just sort to find ways to enjoy ourselves uh, when we when we debate and find different ways to approach to approach different arguments and such and the Jamaica Association of Debate and Empowerment has been uh, quite uh, a great organization 
that has really honed and encouraged debated for me personally. Um, last year, they were actually this year, they would have re received a Pain Youth Award so for their efforts to expand debating, and they just concluded their competition last week. Mm -hmm. So uh, debating for me has not only been a journey of, of personal self-discovery, but it has also been one where I have benefited from being impacted by you know, different individuals, my coach, my team, and Jade as well. So it's been a very interesting experience. Mm -hmm. But um, apart from debating, I, I, I read that you also won um, the Morris Cargill Journalism Award. Yes, no, yes, the I Morris mean, Cargill Award. I, your columnist at um, Glino, at Journal, I am. You know? No, I, I am, know, yes. I know what it takes um in getting those articles ready. I where do you find the time to do all of this? Well, actually, writing this has been a hobby of mine mm. uh, since my final year in high school. Uh, I started writing. So I, I was on an academic program that my old boys had funded to China. And I remember I wrote a report about the experience and sent it to the Old Boys Association. Mm -hmm. And uh, one old boy in particular was quite impressed with the quality of writing. And he sent it to the cleaner to be published. And the then associate editor oh, at the time okay. was very impressed with the writing and invited me to contribute pieces. This would have been in 20. 2018 actually mm -hmm. October was October no August August 2018 was when my article came out and then I first started to contribute articles in around November of 2018 and at that point I was just bringing together stories that highlighted positive developments of young people because I think youth who did well should be highlighted so I was featuring young people and by around March 2019 I wrote my first opinion piece which was an analysis of the budget presentation, the maiden budget presentation by uh, Dr. Nigel Clark. Okay. And from there, I started to contribute and critique policy, which is where, where, where really my columns uh, focus a lot on. And uh, I would have received the Morris Cargill Award in that same year, that first year of writing uh, for, mm. for the papers, actually. Uh, Mr. Boyne was someone who uh, had inspired yes, me yes. as well because I yeah. I wanted to be someone like him when I was when I when I did my columns I said I would always say okay what well, would well, how would how would Ian Boyne write right approach this issue and then what is my unique style that I can add to it so that yeah. and that was something yeah. that I learned growing up because I used to read the papers with my grandfather uh, so oh, I received more as in twenty nineteen and uh, after then I just continued writing so I came on staff as a news reporter. I did articles on different issues and different columns as well. My most recent column, which came out last week, was analyzing the situation in Haiti and the challenges any intervention will face. And it's been a joy to really write. But you also won the, the PM Youth Award um, for nation building in 2019. Yes. The yes. Governor General's Achievement Award in 2021. Um, how important was it though to you winning those awards? What did what 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 did they mean to you? Well, they meant to me that. So I'm always interested in how can I inspire others. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the PM Youth Award, that one was quite shocking. Uh, when I received it, I would have received it for that work with the Prefects Association and getting the Prefects Association established. But uh, for me, I had dedicated that award to the young people out there who have ideas but may not necessarily know how to go about it. So mm -hmm. I had, a, had the benefit of a very supportive team. But I think that awards such as the PM Youth Awards are so important because uh, they really highlight that no one is ever too small to make an impact. Mm -hmm. And you can make an impact regardless of the circumstance that you face. So I remember when we started the Prefect Association, we had zero dollars. And we benefited from the support of phenomenal donors. Uh, but they were just so inspired by the idea that they came on board and they supported us. And I think that awards like that really highlight that you, you can make a difference uh, despite uh, the circumstances as well. Similarly to the Governor General's Achievement Award, 
uh, I think that it will, I wanted to, uh, well, I used, I see that award as a way to inspire others mm -hmm. so that a young person who may not grow up with a voice or may face certain personal difficulties or can go and do well, regardless of those circumstances. I think those awards are particularly important, not necessarily because of the award itself, but what it symbolizes that people can do regardless of the circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, you're presently at Cambridge. Tell me a little about that experience so far. Well, Cam Cambridge is beautiful. It's a very beautiful yeah, I university. I can just imagine. Uh, although I must admit, I'm quite cold when I'm here. Uh, it's been freezing <laughs> lately. <laughs> but I I actually find that my background at the University of the West Indies has uh, adequately prepared me for Cambridge. The, the same types of uh, type of information and sources that we use at UWE are what we use here at Cambridge. Uh, although the the difference in the Cambridge is like the Cambridge experience has more to do with the, the age of the university. So they have a tradition of formal dinners mm -hmm. where you would wear your gown or oh. uh, it's really a university steeped in tradition. Uh, and I was you now experienced the whole college system and how different colleges are. Uh, I've also had the opportunity to meet really, really great uh, friends who are here, who have been able to uh, make an impact in their own special way or who really has a love for learning. Mm -hmm. uh, additionally, I have had the opportunity to try different types of alcohol and beer, which was <laughs> interesting. But prior to coming here in Cambridge, I, I rarely drank alcohol. Yeah, wonderful. But, oh, <laughs> it's so, Make it's sure so it's a taste, though, you know, um, David. Make sure it's only a taste. <laughs> oh, no, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So Cambridge has uh, been a, a very good experience. Mm -hmm. All right. So Oxford now, um, what will your research be on? Tell me about your research for Oxford. So my research is now looking at uh, how we... So there are two, two avenues that are looking at. It's either going to focus on we can get access to financing for mm -hmm. agriculture okay. or it's looking okay. at how we can facilitate industrial upgrading mm -hmm. through global value chains so those are the three the two broad categories that i'm particularly interested in mm -hmm. but rest assured it is going to be related to development it is going to focus at on at the firm and individual level it is going to look at how can we make an impact mm -hmm. uh and well use given in bearing in mind the global uh, mm -hmm. economic situation uh, uh, that we have. And I'm interested in exploring because uh, there are several opportunities that Jamaica has. And I think that uh, once we play our cards right, then we can take advantage of those opportunities and achieve our development goals. I think it is possible for Jamaica to become a high income economy. It's certainly possible in my lifetime, I believe. I'm very optimistic about that, but it's just for us to make the right decisions. So, and I want to know, study how can we make those right decisions. Mm -hmm. And you'll be back in Jamaica at you know after Oxford. Well, that's the goal. Although I am open to working with different international organizations to get that experience mm -hmm. because I think the experience working internationally is so important. So I'm interested in getting that experience and then carrying that experience back mm -hmm. to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, before I leave, though, um. David, um, you want to leave a message for, you know, any young person who might be thinking of trying to be the next um, road scholar? Well, I lived with young persons, uh, the message my grandfather said to me, the words mm -hmm. can't do not exist. So remove them from your vocabulary. I think that every young person can achieve their goals once they remain committed to it, they visualize what they want to achieve, they break down the steps that they can achieve it. And mo most importantly, they also have role models and mentors as well. Mentorship is so incredible. It is so important. And I've benefited from having a, a rich reservoir of mentors as well. Mm -hmm. So to any young person interested in achieving any major milestone, visualize your plan, uh, break down, break it down into several steps, build a support base around you, including ha having mentors and mm -hmm. just working at it and, and not, don't stop despite the circumstances. Mm -hmm. 
you mentioned mentors. You want to hail up any of uh, your mentor, you know, before you leave, before my time run out. <laughs> oh, certainly. So I, so certainly my uh, my economics teacher, uh, mm. Mr. Selvin Gilbert, has been uh, an incredible impact uh, on me personally. Uh, also, uh, Mr. Douglas Rain as well, who is a, a past will Marion uh, and someone who I have met. I met in second form and I had the, pr the privilege of uh, becoming very close to over, over these uh, recent years. Uh, my professors as well, uh, Yui, um, uh, Professor uh, Skoberg and uh, Dr. Campbell have also been uh, positive mentors and Dr. Gatrier as well has also been uh, very positive mentors for me. Uh, and ultimately though, I, I think that I, I would, it would be remiss of me if I didn't mention the support of um, the Almighty Father and yes. uh, the impact yes. he has had on me personally, uh, because I am someone who believes in prayer. I am someone who believes in faith. Mm. And uh, I think my faith has also contributed a lot to uh, my own personal success. Well, thank you, David. It was a pleasure having you. I really enjoyed talking to you. And I want to wish you all the best um, for at Cambridge and when you go off to Oxford. Thank you, thank you so great. much and thank you for having me. All right.